Welcome to the latest episode of Griffin Hall. Now, a couple episodes back, I, uh, I finished the workshop levels and I started powering them up with a, a bunch of water wheels. Now, on paper, this seemed like an excellent idea, but in actual practice, I had gotten uh, about halfway through the process and found that I was experiencing noticeable but tolerable lag. Uh, I stopped further water wheel construction and decided to take a break, sort of. And uh, during that break, I cleaned up the local neighborhood by tearing down a pillager outpost, and then I built a lighthouse and tavern. But every once in a while, I had to run back to the hall and empty my pockets, and that's when I experienced the lag all over again. And uh, it bugged me. I mean, it really bugged me. It still bugs the hell out of me, so I need to fix this. The first step in tackling a problem like this is to figure out just what the problem actually is, or at least rule out what it isn't. Uh, the best way to start that process is to quantify the problem. Now I know that the frame rate drops as I climb down to the workshop level, however the effect seems to be highly localized, and I mean highly localized. For example, if I go back to the central shaft and climb about 30 blocks toward the surface, the problem's gone. Likewise, if I remain on the workshop level and then head toward the furthest corner from the existing banks of water wheels, the problem seems to be almost completely gone. However, if I then turn around and face the area where the water wheels are, I immediately start to have problems. The closer I get to the water wheels, the worse those problems get. Now those are some important data points. Uh, so the problem is definitely a matter of location and the water wheels are the source. Now since the problem goes away when I'm away from them and not looking at them, the lag's not from their operation or the sounds they generate because that would not be affected by whether or not I'm looking directly at them. Therefore, the problem is almost certainly a graphics issue, and for that, the place to start looking is at the shader level. So as a quick experiment, I turned the shader off, and the problem was gone. Period. Bingo. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I used to work tech support, and after having somebody restart their application or system, the next step was to make sure that the latest and greatest software versions were installed. So I fell back to the age-old and time-proven method and grabbed the latest versions of Rubidium, Oculus, and the BSL shaders. And after installing them and rebooting the machine, I could not get Minecraft to boot at all. At all. I was crashing out loading Rubidium and Oculus. So I reinstalled the same older versions of each of these mods, and while the game was bootable again, uh, the lag that had been tolerable before had degraded into a slideshow. Now I went into the BSL shader settings and set the profile to low, no difference. Uh, I then started turning off features one by one and by the time I was able to get back to some level of tolerable lag, uh, I couldn't tell the uh, visual difference between running with or without the shader. Now I know that the create mod development team has uh, released a new update and I checked and yes there was a 0.5.1 version for Minecraft 1.19.2 uh, so I grabbed it in the hopes that the new water wheels would help. Now uh, I booted up Minecraft but the create upgrade did not seem to make a difference. Uh, but since I had already broken my own mod upgrade rule several times over by this time, uh, I figured that if I was in for a penny, I was in for a pound, so I upgraded all of my add-ons. And yes, I know that this will probably wreak havoc uh, on the landscape again, but at the moment I've already explored a sizable region around the hall, and uh, the chances are pretty good that I will never really need to go beyond what I've already discovered, and if I do, I'll have more terraforming challenges. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, I already have a queue for those. Uh, while I was at it, I took the opportunity to shed some mods, such as uh, the Moving Elevators mod. Now, I had originally chosen it uh, instead of trying to use the Create mod because the Moving Elevators mod had a lot more functionality, uh, with the downside being that it required a phenomenal amount of iron, uh, especially for the complex design that I built into my plan. However, the new release of Crate has significantly improved elevator support, so I will go that route instead. I also found that there were new versions of Valkyrie Skies and Eureka uh, for Minecraft 1.19.2, and it looks like Clockwork is on the way as well, so uh, I snatched them up too. Now I'll keep these craft machines, at least for now. Uh, I still plan to create a deep dive video on that mod, and my current airship is still very useful. Uh, ultimately, it looks like I have two choices for clearing up my performance problem. 
Either I can play without my shader or I can physically separate the banks of water wheels to help reduce their impact. Uh, I have a weakness for the visuals so I will stick with the shaders or else I will almost certainly lose interest. So if we look at the uh, current workshop design, the banks of water wheels are clustered around the central shaft running through the workshop. Uh, the new plan would move them further out, at least two modules or 19 blocks outward. Uh, I could even extend them a module or two further out, but I don't know about committing to that just yet. Um, regardless of how far out I move them, this will open up eight new uh, modules in the main workshop, and I'm sure that I can find stations or contraptions to fit into at least four of those. As I dig down into the bowels of my engine, uh, I can see that the existing water wheels were automatically switched out with the new water wheel models. And that's a relief, as I was worried about having to craft a massive stack of the new wheels and having the old ones going to waste. So at this point, I've removed all of the water wheels in both areas, and then I turned the shader back on and set it to the default settings, and voila, no discernible issues. So I think the notion of moving the various blocks of uh, water wheels out and away from each other uh, is a good idea. The only real question is whether moving them out two modules will be enough. Uh, this is the first time that I've encountered the deep dark biome, and these sounds are almost certainly related to that. Um, I have no idea if a warden makes noise, but I've been doing enough work around here that maybe this is indeed a warden that I've activated with all my banging about. I know there's a uh, deep underground ravine that cuts into the deep dark somewhere around the spot ju and just below me. So uh, maybe I can spot it from there. And as I, uh, I look around, I don't see anything except Skulk and I don't hear what I was hearing before. So uh, I, I must be close, but just in the wrong spot. I came back to continue the work, but uh, I can still hear whatever it is out there. And uh, it's quite frankly driving me nuts. I need to at least know what the hell is making the noise. So uh, I'm following my ears to find the source of all the racket. Uh, but if I'm right, and it is a warden, uh, I need to be careful about this. So this is not what I was expecting. Um, but I'm not quite sure what these are. But in the long tradition of humans encountering the unknown, uh, I will try to wipe them out. Now in this case, I will use my handy dandy bucket o magma. And the magma did bupkis. Uh, and apparently I'm too close for missiles, so I'll have to switch to guns. Uh, so these are, or were, uh, skulk sensors. I should have probably harvested them with my silk touch pickaxe, but quite frankly I have no idea what I would need or want a skulk sensor for. Now I'm sure that I'll find some more in the future, and in the meanwhile I'll keep working on the current focus, and at some point I will research what skulk sensors are good for. Now I've dug out the new space and I've paved it uh, all the way back to make everything nice and neat. Uh, I then set up a couple of rows of water wheels and with just those two rows I've reintroduced the lag. Uh, though it's still tolerable, I think I will need to rethink my whole power generation strategy uh, again. Uh, I think the problem here is that the water wheels just have a bunch of surfaces and stacking them up in the numbers I envisioned is just going to bring any reasonable computer to its knees. Or perhaps uh, any reasonable computer running a shader. So I need to go back to the drawing board. Uh, way back in the very first episode, I explained that I'm not the kind of guy to go out uh, and build in creative mode. And that's generally true. But survival mode is a horrible place to experiment and prototype designs, uh, especially if they involve rare or hard to get materials. So whenever I make a survival world, I almost always create a second world with the exact same settings, uh, but in creative mode. And this is where I turn to try out different design ideas. Uh, now that I need to find a new power solution, I'm returning to my creative world to see what will or won't work before I spend a bunch of time trying to implement it in the survival world. Now if I'm going to be honest here, uh, I guess I should have done a prototyping of my big power design uh, in this world first, but uh, on the other hand, the concept was pretty straightforward and in all of my years of vanilla Minecraft, I had never really run into anything like this before. Uh, but you live and then you learn. And if you don't learn, you probably stop living. So, there you go. So, let's talk about the new power design. Um, I think I have two options. 
Uh, one is to keep the power generation very local, which is to say that it's created at or very close to where it will be used. The second option is to still centralize power production, but on a dramatically smaller scale and possibly a different configuration as well. I started experimenting with the notion of local power. Now each module has nine blocks by nine blocks of buildable floor space, and uh, the floors are comprised of a floor layer, a conduit layer underneath that, and then the ceiling layer for the level below that. Now, this means that the best implementation strategy, while keeping the power production uh, out of the way and out of sight, would be to build horizontal uh, water wheels into the conduit layer of the floor. And if additional power is absolutely necessary, I could add another layer of water wheels at the floor layer. The problem with this approach is that the new water wheels have a much slower base speed, and so contraptions powered by them are gonna move incredibly slowly. Uh, that is, if they work at all. Uh, increasing RPMs would need to happen through either the use of a, a rotation speed controller or a bunch of small and large cogs. The uh, rotation speed controller would be absolutely perfect, except that it is expensive to make, and I would have to stand up a, a moderate amount of automation just to put one together. Now, using the cogs is much easier and cheaper, but that option takes considerably more space. Uh, that's when I started thinking about redesigning the centralized power production. With the new version of the Create mod, the old 3x3 water wheels only produce 128 units of rotational force, uh, and that is no matter how many sides of the wheel have water flowing over them. However, the uh, developers also added a new 5x5 water wheel, which produces 512 units of rotational force, but only at 4 RPM, so I will definitely need to increase rotation and speed. After thinking it over and then sleeping on it, uh, I think I will go with the larger water wheels in a centralized design. After all, the uh, floor of the workshop is already set up to handle that, and this design would require far fewer water wheels and thus reduce the number of surfaces the shader would need to render. Now, uh, I think I will go with eight large water wheels for each station, and each large water wheel produces 512 units of rotational force, which would give 4,096 units per station, and there are four stations, which would give a grand total of a bit under 16,400 rotational units. That is nowhere near the ridiculous numbers I had originally planned for, but realistically, it's probably much more than I will actually need in the workshop. Uh, with all that decided, I can begin undoing the, uh, the last experiment in the hall, and then moving forward with the new design. Um, however, I am now thinking of doing something other than hiding them behind some walls. Uh, that part will take some additional thought and consideration. And after a lot of trial and error, or more accurately, trial and critique, uh, I have a new design. Now it's semi-open. Instead of completely closing it off, I have the water coming down through the ceiling where it then turns to eight large water wheels in series, uh, all of which can be directly observed. The power is then sent through a series of cogs that increases the RPMs to something that should work for all devices, but not make each device prohibitively expensive to operate. However, the most important thing to note is that what you see here is one quarter of the planned power production, and now that it's up and running, there's been no discernible uh, loss of frame rate. Now I'm hopeful that the fully implemented design will still result in little to no loss of frame rate, but there's only one way to know for sure. And after several hours of work, all four sets of water wheels are spinning and generating over 16,000 units of rotational power. Now, yes, there is a noticeable loss in frame rate, but it seems to be quite tolerable at the moment. Now, my main worry at this point is that the building uh, of contraptions and processing stations may push the lag from the tolerable zone into the slideshow zone. However, I'll have to keep an eye on that and handle it if and when the time comes. Uh, however, aside from the lag, I'm pretty happy with the aesthetics of the design, and so I can now finally move to populating the workshop with the devices that will enable me to do whatever crafting or processing that I might possibly desire, and then we will work on industrializing my resource production while also building out the estate and the hall itself. And of course, I'm excited about combining the villages to the west, uh, the expansion of the village to the southeast, and building various roads, bridges, ports, and more throughout the region. 
I also have a strong desire to design a more substantial airship for exploration and possibly use as a mobile base. But I'm getting ahead of myself again, so uh, I will continue to take it one step at a time. And in the meanwhile, I hope this finds you and yours in good health, good spirits, and perhaps a touch of good fortune. Cheers. Cheers.